the Madman. There are some pretty exciting cards from the mini set revealed. So starting with Hunter, we got Hidden Meaning, two mana, secret, when your opponent ends their turn with no mana, summon a random three cost minion. So that on the surface looks pretty bad, paying two mana for a random three cost minion. The one thing going for it is that this is summoned after your opponent ends their turn, which means they can't interact with it. That's assuming your opponent spent all their mana, which you can't assume. If there were secret synergy, hidden meaning might actually have some value to it, but too variable and too not good enough to actually see play. Next up, we have the Hunter Death Knight dual class cards. And I gotta say, these cards, they lean more in favor of Death Knight. Hollow Hand, a 6 mana 3 6 undead beast with lifesteal and rush, and also damages minions next to whomever this attacks. While it doesn't look inspiring in any way, but where this is really good is if you actually hand buff the card, and maybe this card pushes hand buff uh, Death Knight. Say this card gets plus four. Seven attack into a board of three minions, that's gaining 21 health. I really could see this as like the, the payoff of playing a hand buff deck. And that is why I think that it's more likely to actually see use in Death Knight. And I think this card actually unlocks that archetype. Uh, it's a big buff to it. Speaking of unlocking new archetypes, another card that I'd say is more for the Death Knight, even though it's a 100 Death Knight dual class card. Yelling Yodeler, 4 mana 3, 4 undead, battle cry, trigger a friendly minion's death rattle twice. I think likely targets for this are Foul Egg and Nerubian Egg, and there may be even more synergy coming with the next card. In fact, let's just jump right into it. It's the Death Knight card, Dead Air. Two mana, requires a Frost and an Unholy Rune. Destroy your undead, resummon them. This card is arguably worse than Unholy Frenzy, but Unholy Frenzy is a pretty good card, and the Dead Air has some benefits over Unholy Frenzy in that you can actually use it while your opponent has no minions on the board, and maybe you just want more of these effects. We're really looking for a Death Rattle Death Knight here, uh, especially combined with Yelling Yodeler. There's like a critical mass of Death Rattle-esque cards now for this style of Death Knight that Death Rattle's going all over the place. You know what a really annoying card is to get resurrected? Uh, and by the way, that Dead Air card uh, doesn't just interact with Death Rattle, it actually interacts with this card as well. Cool Ghoul. A uh, 4 mana 3 1 Undead for Death Knight and Paladin. Divine Shield Reborn. This card reminds me a lot of Lingering Zombie. Uh, Lingering Zombie being a 1 mana 1 1, which you had to kill 3 times. Cool Ghoul is a 4 mana 3 1, which you have to kill 4 times. If you dead air your Cool Ghoul, which has lost Divine Shield already, then you're gonna get back a Cool Ghoul with Divine Shield with no Reborn, and you'll get a Cool Ghoul with Divine Shield and Reborn. So even though this card's Death Knight and Paladin, I'd say it has more synergy with Death Knight, but uh, I wonder if this is just good enough for a Paladin deck to run a pure Paladin. Perhaps got like just good enough uh, stats for the cost and it's very sticky and there's synergy with Divine Shield stuff. Another card for Death Knight and Paladin, Cold Feet, two mana Frost spell. Enemy minions cost five more next turn. This is a pretty interesting one. We have seen a card similar to this before. Rebuke was not wildly played, even though people thought it would be because Lothab was so good. Uh, the reason for that is stopping spells is pretty specific, and sometimes decks don't have to play spells, they can just play minions. Uh, and minions are more likely than spells, and it sucks when you actually rebuke against a deck that rebuke does nothing against. So Cold Feet, I'd say is a little bit better than rebuke, because enemy minions on curve are what the majority of decks are going to try to play. So if you Cold Feet, there is a greater chance early that your opponent will just pass and not do anything. However, there's also a chance they will just play a spell and then your Cold Feet did nothing. I'm a lot more thinking that this card is on the viable side compared to Rebuke, but ultimately I think there might be enough decks that 
play both minions and spells, or there will be enough decks that play mainly spells and or weapons, that Cold Feet will find its matchups where it's not very good, and then therefore won't see play because of that. Now Paladin I don't think has very many control decks, uh, so Cold Feet I would see in pretty much Blood Death Knight if they have the room to run this, if the meta was right. And the meta is probably never going to be the case where Cold Feet is correct. Over in Paladin land, Paladin gets a really good location, I'd say. The Dance Floor, a two mana, two durability, give your minions rush location. Paladin has a number of reasons that they will want to give a bunch of minions rush. It mostly has to do with Funk Fin and Jitterbug. It is tough to get those minions to stick around. Uh, and their effect is often decreased as a result. But when you can give them Rush, you could play Funk Fin or Jitterbug and then play your Divine Shield minions and then like immediately cash those in for more value. Uh, I could see this card being played in that type of pure Paladin deck, which is already good. So yeah, printing a good card for a good deck. That's a recipe for a winner. When I said Cold Goal was more of a Death Knight card, I perhaps hadn't thought enough about uh, this card in conjunction with Dance Floor as well. Cold Goal is a little bit slow because, you know, four deaths, like, how do you really get four death usage? Well, when you can speed up the deaths and their usage with giving them Rush, that makes the Cold Goal even cooler. Control Paladin and Control Shaman, both of which don't exist right now, uh, but perhaps this card is also for mid-range decks. Get Horn of the Windlord, a very big weapon, 6 mana, 3, 4, with Wind Fury. Whenever your hero attacks a minion, set its stats to 3, 3. Wow, so this card, the turn comes into play, basically kills 2 minions, and you only take 6 damage. Uh, and you have credit for killing 2 future minions as well. This is a really strong late game control card. Now granted, it is for Paladin and Shaman, both of which don't have very strong late game decks at the moment. This is one step in the right direction uh, for Shaman and Paladin, though, to have more competitive control decks at the end. It is perhaps interesting to also note that Paladin getting a Wind Fury weapon uh, makes an interesting potential, like, Paladin burst strategy possible. Uh, the Horn of the Windlord is 6 damage by default, but every time you add damage, you basically double it, uh, add damage to yourself. So, how would you need to deal 30 damage? You'd have to get the weapon up to 15 attack. You can't quite get it that big, but with double Feast and Famine, adding 6 attack, and with double uh, 4 Quelta loss, giving you another 4 attack, that's a 13 attack Wind Fury weapon, and you've buffed a minion by six so uh 13 attack weapon that's 26 damage burst and of course you have life steal so you don't have to necessarily kill your opponent uh another way for paladins to perhaps play maybe a control style and then like kill him with the horn at the end kind of a combo deck finally for paladin shaman dual class card we have jukebox totem a two mana zero four mech totem at the end of your turn summon a one one silver hand recruit a totem it's a mech those both have synergy with Paladin uh, with the mech, Shaman with the totem. It is a way to get value over time. And the extra health instead of Primal Fin Totems 3 is actually a pretty big deal. Uh, much harder to remove. If you're summoning two Silver Hand Recruits and you force your opponent to kill a four mana minion, uh, that's pretty solid. Control decks will hate having to use a spell to kill this Jukebox Totem and will be sad if they don't have this spell to kill Jukebox Totem because uh, this does generate value each turn. One notable thing as well is that even if this card is not that strong, you may end up playing one of these in Pure Paladin anyways because the Totem is a unique card that you can search up with the Purador. So might as well include one of those into the deck. Cool stuff. Looking forward to seeing more of these Fast and furiously revealed expansion mini set cards.